Imagine you're in a conversation with somebody about a global issue or process. After you've finished, they respond with, Ah, oh, well, we'll be dead by then, or none of us will make it out alive anyway. This response, aside from being completely asinine, is soon to be incorrect. Advances in medical technology all but ensure that the current and future generations will enjoy quite a lengthy lifespan. It is said that the first person to reach a thousand years of age is alive today. Living longer or forever may sound like a sci-fi fantasy, but curing aging is actually easier than one might imagine. Harvard molecular biologist David Sinclair even states it's easier to cure than cancer or Alzheimer's. This is an obvious point, as most life-threatening diseases take place at the end of life when the human body begins to break down. Despite an ingrained fear of death, people have a strange aversion to immortality. Of course I'm referring to biological immortality in the context of this video, as a true everlasting life is most likely off the table. So excluding religious nonsense, what are some alleged issues against extending the human lifespan? The first and most widely used argument is overpopulation. It states that if people aren't dying, the population will spike to a level where we will raise all of Earth's available resources, causing a massive extinction of not just humans, but all of their life as well. Right away, there are a few glaring issues with this idea. This argument assumes humans will forever only inhabit the Earth. Given recent plans to colonize Mars and the availability of space in just our solar system, this titanic of an argument already seems to be taking on water. For the sake of debate, let's assume we aren't going anywhere anytime soon, yet achieve biological immortality. The current human population is sitting around 7.5 billion people. Fringe researchers claim we could comfortably hold a global population of up to 18 billion people. But we'll lowball the estimate to the figure stated in Live Science's article, How Many People Can the Earth Support? They put forth the range of 9 to 10 billion people. They state that to reach 10 billion, everyone would have to be vegetarian, but I'll address this in a second. In that same article, they give a projection of the population growth, 9 billion by 2050 and 10 billion by 2100. Again, we'll probably be well into colonizing space by 2100, but we'll dismiss that idea for now. Looking at the figures, you can see that the growth is stalling, gaining 1.5 billion people in 30 years, but only 1 billion in 50. Why is this? A large factor is the stalling out of birth rates in first world countries. As it turns out, people don't have so many kids when life is good and the infant mortality rate is down. So what would happen if you were given a thousand plus years to live? Chances are you wouldn't even consider having kids until 400 or so years down the line. Sound ridiculous? What about when the human life expectancy was only 40 or so years in the not so distant past? Back then, it wasn't strange at all to have over half a dozen children. Scaling the diminishment of offspring, it might not seem strange at all to wait a couple centuries to have children. Or you could have children early on, and then have the rest of those 900 years to yourself, or not have kids at all. Most societies go through this shift as they transition from small agricultural societies to industrious ones. Adjusting our birth rate isn't the only trick to beat this cap. We could alter the environment to produce more food per acre than is possible now. I'm sure some environmentally minded viewers out there just cringed, but hear it out. Systems such as hydroponics in our colleges would allow us to grow more food than we currently do and might use less resources in the long term. We might go into these systems in more detail in the future, as these solutions to our problems tend to blend into each other. Speaking of food, I'm sure by this point I've lost a lot of you omnivores out there, but fear not. You don't need to give up the exquisite taste of seared animal meat to save the human race. Lab-grown meat is beginning to take off, and this means we could have an abundance of meat without exhausting our resources and the lives of millions of livestock. As an added bonus, this lab-grown meat will probably cost even less than the current choices. Like life extension, lab-grown meats and other genetically modified food receive a considerable amount of backlash. I foresee a foray into this topic in the future, but we'll move on for now. Rest assured, however, these developments are solutions, 
not hindrances. So perhaps we don't need to worry about the human population. But what of the other major argument? That this sort of life extension is unnatural. Right off the bat, if you want to be more natural, take off all your clothes and go live in the woods for a few years without the use of any tools. Human beings can hardly be considered natural anymore with our use of technology and a social structure far more complex than any other life on this planet. Despite this, most people normalize death as a natural and inevitable part of life. This is said in spite of the fact that we've been fighting death from the get-go. We have and always will be finding medicines that cure or treat illness. Some illnesses, such as smallpox, have all been but eradicated from the human race. It is ridiculous to think aging is any different from an illness. Aging is the breakdown of systems and cells within your body. Just because it isn't a virus or bacterium causing it doesn't mean that it isn't a disease. Despite this obvious conclusion, institutions such as the CDC still fail to classify aging as a disease. We're simply told to develop healthy habits so our descent into old age is more gradual and painless. This line of thought can and must cease. Alright, those are the two primary physical concerns, which leaves us with the final and most ridiculous argument of them all. You'll get bored of life. Surprisingly, this is the most common response you get when you ask people if they would want to live forever. This argument is flawed beyond comprehension. Why might you ask? There's always something else to do. Putting jobs and work aside, you could probably spend a hundred plus years exploring every nook and cranny of just the Earth. If we factor in space travel this time, you have a nearly infinite amount of places to explore. Exploration and running about isn't your style? Not a problem. You can spend your time playing every game and or video game ever created. Given that more recent titles take 20 to 40 hours to fully complete, you can sink a large amount of time into that. Or you can take the scholarly route and read every book that has ever been written. Around 129 million titles as of 2010. The number of all these types of media will also continue to rise as the years go on. You can spend your time mastering every skill in existence, or meeting every person you come across and hearing their story. Partaking in any or all of this will easily get you a thousand years of engagement. Furthermore, the thought that one would get bored of life is downright ludicrous. That about wraps up this preface. We may address naysayers again, but next up on the agenda is looking at how we could actually extend the human life and, since I dropped the idea of sustainable solutions, look at how we can trivialize the production of energy and food all while solving global problems. This is the Coal Mine Canary, checking out for now. I wish you a fruitful day.